James Dyson. Jenny Brown. Roy McCormick. Yes, Sam's not here. I think he was going to try to be here, but uh, he's, if he's not here yet, I don't think that he will be able to connect. I think he said he was having, he might not have internet issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, next are the uh, minutes from May the 7th, 2020, our regular meeting, and the minutes from May 18th, which was our special meeting. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve those minutes. I move to approve them. Dyson moves to approve them. I can second. Thank you. All right, mm -hmm. vote. Is Brown? Brown, yes. Dyson? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Spalding? Yes. Okay, next is uh, item number four, which is the approval of the agenda. Uh, I move that we accept the agenda as presented for this evening. Okay, I, uh, I second. I second. It. All right, Mr. Dyson seconded. Okay. Brown? Brown, yes, approve. Dyson? Yes. Formic? Yes. Balding. Yes. Item number five on the agenda is claims to be approved. I don't know if we have any claims. Do we have any claims, Zach? There, there were no claims. I believe okay. those will be prepared for the next regular meeting, if any. Okay. So item number six on the agenda is the uh, Old business discussion of the amendment to 2020 to 2204, altering the interview process and testing cutoff for eligible applicants. So, did everyone get a copy of the? Uh, there were some alterations made to the proposed rule change based on the discussions from the last meeting. Did everybody get a copy of that? It was in. I the email that was sent out with um, the agenda and the Zoom meeting information. Yes. Dyson did. Okay. I, I must have missed it somewhere. Okay. So the 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 what was changed, I'll just go over it briefly, is that um, the proposed rule originally was gonna establish uh, a mandatory number of panels uh, with a with a each panel interviewing only up to 20 people. Uh, the new rule leaves it kind of, and it also kind of, it uh, established that there, the panel would be made up of five members, three from online uh, fire members, members of the fire department, uh, one from the Jeffersonville Fire Merit Commission, and one from the administration of the Jeffersonville Fire Department or from the Jefferson, Jeffersonville Human Resources. Um, the changes, which were basically uh, based on the discussion between Amy Emerson, uh, Joe, and members of the commission, was that to make it more flexible, because you don't know how many candidates you would have in each, to make it the, the panels statistically fair, uh, to those involved, each panel would need to interview at least 20 people. So if you max them out at 20 per panel, that might be not a good idea. Um, so I changed the proposed rule to basically make it so every interview process for applicants, you all would set up panels based on the amount of applicants. There's no set amount of panels that you have to create. You could do it each individual time vote on the number of panels that you wanted. Uh, also, the makeup of the panels would not be specified. You could just pull members from the Fire Merit Commission, the uh, Fire Department, and the administration of the Fire Department or Jeffersonville Human Resources Office. So there's no 
three members online and one from each of the other two. It's the panels can be established with uh, two members of the mayor commission, or you know, it it doesn't necessarily specify. It's just a more flexible rule. Um, the percentages for the testing did not change. Uh, that was left at the cutoff being 70% being the minimum score, uh, but you would still only interview up to 100 candidates. So if more than 100 candidates got greater than 70%, the panels would only interview up to 100 candidates. And at that point, if you wanted to, you could establish five panels um, or four panels, um, but there's no set amount. Um, Zach, there was no uh, wording change about when we can't shut off the last meeting kind of quickly, someone threw out the idea of every candidate had to be interviewed by each of the five panels or something. And that oh. was going to mean everybody had to interview all 100 people. So, so what I did actually, uh, I think what she was saying is that you may want the ability to uh, divide up questions between panels, uh, depending, let's say maybe you didn't have a hundred applicants, you had 60 or so, and you had two panels, each doing 30 interviews. Um, and that maybe you would create a system where or, or yet less than that would be a, maybe a better option, but uh, each panel would have different questions that they would ask, but they would each get a chance to interview each of the applicants. Um, I realize that doesn't really reduce the load that each panel is interviewing, but it reduces the number of questions that each panel is asking essentially, but that would give people a chance to be interviewed by multiple panels. That's in the rule currently, but it just says may. Okay. They don't. You can choose to do it that way. Uh, essentially, if if people felt that that was you know a good idea for that application process because of the number of people who had applied, whether it be small or large, for you know whatever reason. But the rule is written so that there is some flexibility in there uh, for all to after the testing occurs we know how many applicants will be coming in for interviews to structure the panels uh, and the interviews in a way that is fair, but also um, reduces the load for uh, the commission to be the only people interviewing a hundred people. Zach, just so, as you mentioned, not everybody was privy to some of those conversations we were having with Ms. Emerson out of, well, I guess, most of well, she was she was at the last meeting, so she right. most of those were. But I think that was the whole point of making sure that each panel had at least twenty interviews per panel, so that they could make sure that there wasn't any unfairness happening. Sure, and I actually I I left that out. I apologize. So the other change is instead of maxing each of the panels out at twenty interviews, twenty interviews is the minimum per panel. Um. So you would have at least 20 interviews per panel. So when you set up the number of panels, you'd want to think about that. That is a mandatory piece of the rule. Okay, I've got one question for you, Zach. Yes. Okay, what if the, uh, the candidates say uh, number 95 through 105 people that say take the test have the same score? How do we determine the top 100 if there's 105 people you know, with the passing score, and the last five or six might be tied at 70. Uh, that I do not have a good answer for. Um, I don't know exactly how that would work, but I believe that the way that tests are scored um, is a, uh, they're scored against each other, essentially. So I don't know that you would ever have a situation where you'd have people getting the same scores, but um, we've had we've had that, that, we've had that situation before, Zach Spalding, uh, okay. where we've had the same exact score. Uh, as you mentioned, it's scored against each other. There's a, it's a curved exam. Um, I, in my opinion, if it happened to be that the tied up area was the 100 mark 
and it was 100 to 105, I think there would, would have to, in my opinion, we would go ahead and interview 105 candidates. I, I think that that would be a safe way to, to kind of accommodate a situation like that. Okay, that was my only question. So does anyone else have any questions about the uh, proposed uh, rule change? I do not. Okay. So at this point, Zach, what do we need to do? Do we need to go ahead and vote on the uh, approval of the change? Yes, um, you would need to have a motion and potentially a second if there is one. And then if there is, uh, take a vote. Um, a majority of the panel uh, of the commission would be needed to pass it. So you would need three members of four that are currently here to pass it. Um, and just to be clear, the proposed rule changes uh, a couple different rules in your all's internal rules. It changes um, rules and procedure number two, sections three, six, and seven. Um, now, the largest changes are to number three, but in section uh, I'm sorry, three, eight, and nine. The, 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 the largest changes are to the applicant or to the personal interviews, but there is a change to the applicant rating section and the applicant eligibility section. Um, and those were meant to basically make it so that you could interview more than 30 people. Um, and the other change was to change the cutoff for the testing to 70% rather than the mean, which was the prior rule. Okay. Well, I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, proposed uh, rule change. As Second. it pertains to the person, yeah, as it pertains to the personal interviews. Brown can second. Okay. Uh, okay. Need All to right. vote. Need to vote. Uh, Brown. Brown is a yes. Dyson. Yes. McCormick. Yes. Folding. Yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, Joe, I, I'm, I'm real quick. I'm going to send a copy of the amendments. Uh, to the Fire Merit Commission rules as a full document with the updated rules. Um, I'm going to copy you and Brian Emerson on that. Uh, those need to be distributed to every member of the department. Uh, I know you all have your way of doing that, of posting notice, but um, I, I will need to get it. Chief Emerson can put those on target solutions and they have to, each member will have to actually verify that they've read it. So when each when each member verifies, um, if you could, there'll be a place at the bottom where y'all can certify that every member has received a copy. You send it back to me. They go into effect thirty days from today. Okay. Next is item seven on the agenda, which is uh, finalizing the dates for the applicant testing and interviews and promotional testing interviews for twenty twenty and testing testing site. Yes. So, so what, what date did we decide on as far as applicant testing? Was it July the 11th or the 18th? In the last meeting, we set uh, testing for September 28th and promotion interviews for October 19 to 23. So September 28th. Yeah, I wrote that down on another sheet of paper. So and what was that other date? October 19 to 23 for promotion interviews. So um, I believe that the notes that I have for promotions, um, and these were, these were sent by Amy Emerson as recent as this week. 
she had written exams taking place Monday, September 28th. Is that right? Yes. 2020 from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and a review session from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, the Merit Commission interviews and tactical assessments would take place during the week of October 19th through the 23rd, which is okay. what I had in my notes from our original meeting. Um, okay. Is that everybody's understanding of that's a, of October, right? 19th through the 23rd of October for the. Yes. yes. And that's, that's for promotions. That's for promotions. Right. Yes. Um, Do we determine what time on the, uh, the 10th, uh, October 19th through the 23rd? Do we decide what time? There was no time given uh, in. Amy's, she just blocked off those days. Um, and one other question, Zach, does she uh, say when she come down to uh, go over the, test, the training as far as uh, selecting the questions and that sort of thing? Um, we had not gone over the date for the training for anybody who would be on the panel, but I think well, and I, I just want to, I think that because this rule change happened in the middle of this, uh, she didn't know whether she'd be coming down to train just the merit commission members if you didn't pass a rule change or if we would be setting up panels and she would be coming down to do more. I don't think it changes the timing of it, but uh, we had not discussed the, the specific date yet, but it, I, I believe it happens like right before um, is what she had said. Okay. And the, these are dates, these are dates for promotion testing and interviews. What about for new applicant testing and interviews? So I am trying to look, I've got so many emails from, let's see the written exams. I'm sorry, I've got, let's see, June 13th, obviously, uh, was one that was in the meeting minutes and uh, interviews in Ju oh, July 11th, there we go. So that's, a, that's what I have as the, uh, what was discussed in the meeting, but. Are those still dates that'll work for her? I think there was one day that did not, that did not work and I have a full, email with it, but I cannot find it. Back. What I have is July 11th, 2020, and either August 8th or August 15th for the interviews. So application testing would be July 11th, and the interviews would be the 8th or the 15th. For new hires? For new hires. We're going to have to, just for uh, logistics, if they're going to do one day for all the interviews, we're going to be interviewing up to 100 people. We're going to have to figure out where those interviews are going to take place. Oh, that's another piece that we needed to talk about is uh, where exactly we are going to conduct the interviews in order to comply with the social distancing. And also, there was a recommendation, too, depending on where the testing would take place is have uh, two testings, you know, have one testing, when it's over, then bring in a second group and finish up. Yes, yeah, so applicants, so my note from Amy says that she, July, July 11th for applicant testing is fine. And that, uh, yes, that the written interviews would be either August 8th or August 15th and that you all could decide which of those dates works. Zach, did she mention, um, as far as sending IPSP down for training, are they gonna try to send, is that gonna be one training class? Are they gonna try to train the panels and the commission all at once for promotions and for hiring? I don't know if they'll do, from, I, I, I would think so that they could do it that way, but, um, I mean, that makes the most sense in terms of resources, but um, I've not received, she not said that 
she would do both applicant and promotions testing at the same time. I know the plan was to do all the panels at the same time for applicant testing. Because they're, they're taking place at a different time period and the promotions testing is different than the, or the promotions interviews are different than the application interviews because they're gonna be conducted by seemingly different parties. So just to go over the dates real quick, again, uh, promotions, September 28th, uh, 2020, and for the testing, and October 19th through the 23rd for the promotions interviews. For applicant testing, it would be at July 11th, and for applicant interviews, it would be August 8th or the 15th. Uh, the commission can decide now which which of those dates they'd like to reserve. And the only time that has been locked in was for promotions, and that's September 28th for the exam from 930 to 1230. That's what's in her, uh, the book summary, basically, that she sent out, because there's another, um, I think it's the third item on the agenda today, but, uh, we had a meeting earlier this week with Mike McCutcheon to discuss the reading list for promotions. But yes, on her announcements, the Monday, September 28th for the promotions testing would be from 9.30 to 12.30 p.m., 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. with a review session from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And the, the Merit Commission interviews and the tactical assessment would just take place during the week of October 19th through the 23rd. Right. Zach, I'm looking at the uh, new hire interviews, either that August 8th or 15th. Those are both on Saturdays. Is that intentional? I believe that that's intentional. I think that, uh, the, but those were the dates. I think the last testing process, um, those were on the weekend. Uh, one thing we did want to go over was whether or not. Uh, I don't think we wanted there to be a problem with any like opening of public schools or something like that where people weren't able to make it to the interviews or uh, something like that because they had to take care of their kids or take them to school or you know uh, do something like that but I, I think that, that the choice was made to hold it on the weekend. Yeah I mean I believe that's that's the way I did it before. Mm -hmm. but, I'm good with you. I'm good with either the eighth or the fifteenth. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, the fifteenth is better for me. Okay. Uh, so we we'll do we we'll put that to a vote. Uh, yes. Yeah, so if you want to uh, make a motion to uh, accept the promotions dates and times of uh, mm -hmm. September twenty eighth, two thousand. 20 for promotion testing from 9 30 a.m to 12 30 p.m and with a review session from one to two that same day uh with American commission interviews and technical assessments during the week of october 19th through the 23rd of 2020 that would be the first motion and this is for promotion okay i'd like to make a motion for the uh, written exam for monday the 28th from 9 30 to 12 30 p.m with the review session from 1 to 2 p.m and also the merit commission interviews and tactical assessments during the week of october the 19th through the 23rd of 2020 i will make a rec recommendation that we approve those dates i'll second that okay uh let's vote on it all right brown brown is a yes Dyson? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Spalding? Yes. Okay, then the uh, the other thing we need to vote on is uh, selecting the uh, applicants. Uh, yes, sir. Day. I'll, I'll, TA, I can make a, a motion that we set the applicant uh, testing for July 11th for new hires. 
and interviews for August the 15th. Okay, I uh, second it. Do we want to set time for that, guys, while we're voting? Is that necessary right now? I, don't, I, I think I honestly think that it would be a bad idea to set times for okay. it. Uh, okay. Right now, I think we leave those dates open for IPSB to make the announcement with the times that they're going to be here for. Joe, do you happen to know when they've been done in the past? I mean, it's a Saturday. Uh, they try and do those early? Or? Yeah, so historically, I think, testing, if I'm not mistaken, last time was at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, does that sound right to you? Yeah, that was about what time we, we started. And then, uh, and they're pretty strict on that, uh, Troy. Uh, Troy, and they uh, they shut the doors and seal them up, and right when the testing starts. So, is there any reason? I mean, is there any reason to not set it for eight o'clock? Well, I think uh, someone. Well, Zach, you want to it, check on it and see? I'd like. I'd like to be able to at least like. Uh, check with Amy and make sure that they're going to be down here at eight o'clock before we do an announcement that kind of confuses people. Well, I've got the motion on the table for the dates uh, pending times uh, yet to be determined. Okay, and uh, like I said I second. It. I second it. So Brown, we just need to vote Brown. On that. sorry, Brown. Yes, Brown. Agree. Yes, Dyson. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is item number eight. And it's new business concerning the announcement of testing material for the promotional testing for 2020. Um, before we move on to the next item, uh, I do want to bring up what Joe was talking about with the testing site, because this has been a question from Amy. Um, to, because of the coronavirus, uh, we, if we're going to test on a single day uh, and possibly have 100 or more people taking the exam, um, there needs to be some type of process for or, or a site that can house that many people um, or some type of procedures set up with you know masks and other things that people can get at the door before they come in. Uh, Joe, do you know of a, a testing site that's usable like that? Um, we use, so as most of you know, we use Jeffersonville High School um uh, cafeteria area last year or last hiring process or, or we're, we're talking about the hiring or we're talking about we're talking about the hiring right now yeah no, it's and, and fyi i think we've got over 250 applications right now so yeah. we're not talking about 100 we're talking about what well, yeah yeah um, I think that that was an ideal spot. I think we had almost 300 people in there last time for our for our applicant or for our testing. I don't know that that will meet social distancing requirements. Um, and I don't know how anyone feels about bringing it up in different locations. I did like the idea, Mr. Spalding, that if IPSB was open to it in different waves, maybe a, a more wave. Okay, sure. And if that date's reserved, I mean, they may be able to do like one early morning session, one afternoon. How long does it take to do the test? Uh, I think it's about three hours. Okay. That would give time for two two sessions. Um, and maybe even a clean or something like that, right? Yeah. So I, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that that's one thing that we're gonna have to consider when, when setting all this stuff up but that's that's all i had i didn't so my question is i wasn't uh, in charge last year but who contacts jeff had to see if we can use the school and if not what about the ken ellis building and who would contact them joe would the members of like the department or the administration have the ability to contact the high school or should it come from me 
Uh, between Chief Emerson and I, I think we can we can make that happen. If that's a report, if that's if that's what we're interested in doing, I think the Jeff High uh, location is bigger than the Kennedy. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I say, uh, I, I mean, historically, Mr. Spalding, it would be I think it has been the president, it, it, but we can take that if you want us to do it. We can, we can work on that. Yeah, I just didn't know. Uh, I mean, if you don't mind doing it, that'll work. If not, you know, I can contact them. I'll get with the uh, administration and collectively between the two of us, between the two, we'll have something to report back at the next meeting as far as location. If that's all right, Zach, do you think that's okay? I think that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Joe. And uh, like I said, item number eight on the agenda. The announcement of testing materials. And uh, I've got a copy of it, I believe, Zach, as yeah. far as what uh, the materials I, I, are going to be used. So just, just to be clear, there was a vote, I believe, that took place in February um, that you all approved using the same testing materials as last time's, and this is for promotions. Um, when the department and I went to IPSP to discuss use of those books, we had a couple books where uh, we were worried that being able the the app or the promotions people up for promotions would not be able to get access to those older books. Um, so there were some changes made to the proposed testing materials. About half of them stayed the same. Uh, there were two, three changes though. Um, so I think you'll see in the list that was provided that the, um, the one of the new books is the first one on there, the fire apparatus driver, operator, pump, aerial tiller, mobile water supply. Uh, and that would exclude questions pertaining to tiller operations and other things, but this, Basically, this this document right here, you would just be approving using these books uh, uh, through IPSP's announcements and uh, the decisions by the department on what questions to exclude. Um, what, the, what document are you looking at there? What are you? The, the summary of books uh, for promotions testing 2020. So I believe that first one consolidated two of the books that were used last time uh, and was an updated version of both. Um, so it's one book rather than two. And the second book, which was Fire Engineer's Handbook for Firefighters 1 and 2, stayed the same um, as 2018. Uh, the Structural Firefighting Initial Response Strategy and Tactics second edition was updated. And the other two uh, books on that list stayed the same. And those would be for Fire and Emergency Services Company, the fifth edition, and Command and Control ICS Strategy Development Tactical Selections second edition. So I think that balanced the department's concerns of having to buy new books, um, but also uh, making sure that people who are entering the promotions process would have the ability to get those books if they wanted to. Zach, uh, we're gonna order those. Okay, great. So I, and I just wanted to, uh, the board to be aware that the, if you all, in your all's internal rules, you all approved the books. Um, you did approve prior to this, the, uh, using the same materials, but I don't believe that that's going to be a viable option. So, um, if these books are acceptable to the department. Uh, and the board, I would say that you need to take a vote to basically use these books in the announcement for the promotion testing for this year. 
So this is a change from our previous approval. This is a change from the previous approval. Um, and it's the, the question, some of the, some of the books are pretty large, I think, and the department has, uh, specifically, uh, Mike McCutcheon has gone through and looked at some of the, the sections and said that they, they want to cut down the material that each individual may have to study. So there were, uh, like that first book, it excluded questions pertaining to killer operations. Um, up to 16 to 17. Yeah. Yes. And chief, chief, you said you guys are going to purchase the book so people will have access to them. Yeah. Upon y'all's approval. Okay. I mean, I'll be glad to make the motion then that we modify our uh, approval of uh, materials for promotions uh, to this new uh, and, what is it, an, uh, attachment. And I would just say that the, the only other change was that Mike McCutcheon did go through Firefighter 1 and 2, the Indiana edition, and recommended that sergeants, lieutenants, and captains only have to review chapters 1 through 23 of that book. That was the only other change. So that'd be the the second book in that list and it would ex it would only include chapters 1 through 23. But all materials and books will be available to anybody that wants them at the station houses. Yes. yes. Okay. Then I make a recommendation that we'll uh, we just need a second on my motion then. I can second. Brown can second. All right. Brown? Brown, yes, agree. Dyson? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Spalding? Yes. Okay, number nine on today's agenda uh, is under attorney comments. So you uh, have the floor, uh, Mr. Zach. I have nothing. I just want to, again, I want to thank the department. I want to thank the members of the commission. I realize this has been a long month with a lot of meetings, um, but. Um, That's the way the, this whole year is going to go, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for being available, especially today on a Friday, um, to talk about these issues. So thank you all. And uh, I want to thank Joe and the chief as well for everything that they're doing right now, as well as the other members of the department. And thanks, Zach, for keeping us in line. All right, next next is, uh, is you, Joe, from Local 558. Well, uh, Likewise, thanks to everybody for being available, especially on a Friday. Um, in the spirit of the conversation that we're having in these special meetings and why we're having them, I want to let you guys know that as soon as we uh, the discussion started uh, about the new panel, the new uh, hiring process, I've had several, uh, nearly all of my of the of the minority uh, members of my department reach out and want to be a part of the hiring panels and they're really excited about the new uh, method of interviewing. So I don't think we're going to have any problem building these panels and uh, be settling well with everybody and everybody seems to be pretty excited. So thanks again for everybody's time and I think this is a great change and I appreciate y'all being a part of it. Okay, next. All right, next is from the administration, the chief. You have any comments? I, uh, I'm here with Joseph. Appreciate all y'all's help with this situation. I think it's going to be a very, very useful. A, it's going to be good. Appreciate all y'all's time and your effort for helping us get to where we're getting to today. So thanks again. I appreciate you. All right. And does anyone on the American Commission have any comments? Do you all have, does anybody have any numbers on how many applicants we've had? Any update on the numbers? 250. All right. All females, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we hope so, Jenny. I hope so, too. <laughs> All right. If no one else has any comments, I make a motion that this meeting be adjourned.
I second. All right, Brown. Agree. Dyson. Yes. Yes. Balding. Yes. All right. All right, Mr. President, announces adjourned. Uh, meetings adjourned. I just need to speak with uh, our secretary for a second. Yes, sir.